Chapter 19. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court by Mark Twain. Chapter 19. Knight Errantry as a Trade. Sandy and I were on the road again next morning, bright and early. It was so good to open up one's lungs and take in whole luscious barrels full of the blessed God's untainted, dew-fashioned, woodland-scented air once more, after suffocating body and mind for two days and nights in the moral and physical stenches of that intolerable old buzzard-roost. I mean for me. Of course the place was all right and agreeable enough for Sandy, for she had been used to high life all her days. Poor girl, her jaws had had a wearisome rest now for a while, and I was expecting to get the consequences. I was right. But she had stood by me most helpfully in the castle, and had mightily supported and reinforced me with gigantic foolishnesses which were worth more for the occasion than wisdom double their size. So I thought she had earned a right to work her mill for a while, if she wanted to, and I felt not a pang when she started it up. Now turn we unto Sir Marhaus, that rode with the damsel of thirty winter of age southward. Are you going to see if you can work up another half-stretch on the trail of the cowboys, Sandy? Even so, fair my lord. Go ahead, then. I won't interrupt this time, if I can help it. Begin over again. Start fair, and shake out all your reefs, and I will load my pipe and give good attention." Now turn we unto Sir Marhaus, that rode with a damsel of thirty winter of age southward. And so they came into a deep forest, and by fortune they were knighted, and rode along in a deep way, and at the last they came into a courtelage, where abode the Duke of South Marshes, and there they asked harbour. And on the morn the Duke sent unto Sir Marhaus, and bade him make him ready. And so Sir Marhaus arose and armed him, and there was a mass sung afore him, and he brake his fast, and so mounted on horseback in the court of the castle, there they should do the battle. So there was the duke already on horseback, clean armed, and his six sons by him, and every each had a spear in his hand, and so they encountered, whereas the duke and his two sons brake their spears upon him, but Sir Marhaus held up his spear and touched none of them. Then came the four sons by couples, and two of them brake their spears, and so did the other two, and all this while Sir Marhaus touched them not. Then Sir Marhaus ran to the duke, and smote him with his spear that horse and man fell to the earth, and so he served his sons. And then Sir Marhaus alight down, and bade the duke yield him, or else he would slay him. And then some of his sons recovered, and would have set upon Sir Marhaus. Then Sir Marhaus said to the duke, Cease thy sons, or else I will do the uttermost to you all. When the duke saw he might not escape the death, he cried to his sons, and charged them to yield them to Sir Marhaus. And they kneeled all down, and put the pommels of their swords to the knight, and so he received them. And then they hope up their father, and so by their common assent promised unto Sir Marhaus never to be foes unto King Arthur. And thereupon, at Whitsuntide after, to come he and his sons, and put them in the king's grace. Footnote. The story is borrowed, language and all, from the Mort d'Arthur. M. T. Even so standeth the history, fair Sir Boss. Now ye shall wit that that very duke and his six sons are they whom but few days past you also did overcome and send to Arthur's court. Why, Sandy, you can't mean it. And I speak not sooth, let it be the worse for me. Well, 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 now who would ever have thought it? One whole duke and six dukelets. Why, Sandy, it was an elegant hall. Knight errantry is a most chuckle-headed trade, and it is tedious hard work, too, but I begin to see that there is money in it, after all, if you have luck. Not that I would ever engage in it as a business, for I wouldn't. No sound and legitimate business can be established on a basis of speculation. A successful whirl in the knight errantry line. Now, what is it when you blow away the nonsense and come down to the cold facts? It's just a corner in pork, that's all, and you can't make anything else out of it. You're rich, yes, suddenly rich, for about a day, maybe a week. Then somebody corners the market on you, and down goes your bucket shop. Ain't that so, Sandy? 
whithersoever it be that my mind miscarrieth bewraying simple language in such sort that the words do seem to come endlong and overthwart there's no use in beating about the bush and trying to get around it that way sandy it's so just as i say i know it's so and moreover when you come right down to the bedrock knight errantry is worse than pork for whatever happens the pork's left and so somebody's benefit anyway but when the market breaks in a knight errantry world and every knight in the pool passes in his checks what have you got for assets just a rubbish pile of battered corpses and a barrel or two of busted hardware can you call those assets give me pork every time am i right ah peradventure my head being distraught by the manifold matters whereunto the confusions of these but late adventured haps and fortunings whereby not i alone nor you alone but every each of us me seemeth no it's not your head sandy your head's all right as far as it goes but you don't know business that's where the trouble is it unfits you to argue about business and you're wrong to be always trying however that aside it was a good haul anyway and will breed a handsome crop of reputation in arthur's court and speaking of the cowboys what a curious country this is for women and men that never get old now there's morgan le fay as fresh and young as a vassar pullet to all appearances and here is this old duke of the south marches still slashing away with sword and lance at his time of life after raising such a family as he has raised as i understand it sir gawaine killed seven of his sons and still he had six left for sir marhaus and me to take into camp and then there was that damsel of sixty winter of age still excursioning around in her frosty bloom how old are you sandy it was the first time i ever struck a still place in her the mill had shut down for repairs or something end of chapter nineteen